It is such an honor to join your family to welcome you to Cleveland. We're excited to hear you address the nation tomorrow night. It's been exciting to hear from your family more to come tonight. And I'm convinced what begins in Cleveland will end in the White House. Indiana Governor Mike Pence officially becomes the vice presidential nominee, is introduced as such, and speaks tonight to this convention. Uh, but there's another speaker tonight that may, who may get a lot of attention, Ted Cruz. Let's bring in our panel, syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer, Charles Hurt, political columnist for The Washington Times, A.B. Stoddard, associate editor and columnist at Real Clear Politics, and Steve Hayes, senior writer for The Weekly Standard. A.B., Ted Cruz, we still understand the Trump campaign has not seen this speech as of this hour. Um, what about this, and is he going to take the spotlight or try? Well, it's suspenseful because he hasn't endorsed Donald Trump, and at a meeting today, a thank you gathering with supporters, he barely mentioned him, um, said, you know, we, he said he used the word the nominee that people like to do when they don't want to say Trump's name. So I think everyone's on pins and needles in the Trump camp about what he's going to do to come out and say something supportive and something that could unite the party. But, of course, this is Ted Cruz's um, sort of debut for 2020 as well, working the delegates, working his supporters. He's already he organized his team at home um, for another presidential run, and we know that's his goal. So um, there's much drama. But, you know, Steve, if he does that, much like Chris Christie did last convention, in which didn't really focus on Mitt Romney that much, it seemed, um, doesn't, isn't that a net negative for Cruz? You know, I don't think it necessarily is. What Chris Christie did was focus on Chris Christie, not Mitt Romney. I think what, what we can expect from Ted Cruz is for Ted Cruz to focus on principles that conservatives share together, that Republicans share together. I think that's much more likely to be the direction that he takes. You know, there's been some speculation that, that Cruz would hurt his presidential chances if he doesn't offer a full-throated embrace of Donald Trump in his speech. And I, I guess I just don't buy that argument. I mean, after it was a bitter primary, Donald Trump made fun of Ted Cruz's wife, you know, spread rumors about his father. I think it would be almost odd if Ted Cruz did endorse Donald Trump. All right, uh, Charlie, the uh, tweet came out uh, today from Donald Trump. Uh, the media is spending more time doing a forensic analysis of Melania's speech than the FBI spent on Hillary's emails. Um, and that is what you hear in this convention hall as well, as well as on social media. Um, but now there is another element that's grabbing everybody's attention, and that is this advisor who said that uh, people who commit treason are supposed to be executed. I think Hillary Clinton committed treason, and now the Secret Service is investigating. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, uh, we would call that an unforced error on the on the part of the uh, the, the Trump surrogate or Trump supporter. Uh, I think the campaign is trying to di rightly distancing themselves from the guy. Uh, you know, in terms of the Melania Gate, uh, you know, it, it is a, such a great example of why if there's anybody that uh, people hate more than politicians, it's the media. Um, you know, this was something that that uh, you know, it was it was not good. It was not it was uh, you know you certainly don't want to be lifting lines of your uh, the biggest speech of the night from the uh, you know from another candidate. By the way, that's the uh, the guy, the advisor. Eight, eight eight years ago, but my goodness, I mean, you literally would have thought that that uh, somebody had been shot. The way uh, the amount of media attention that thing got, and of course it turns out to be a fairly uh, benign explanation for how it happened. It was not again, it was not good, but it was but the the lines that were lifted were, were political pablum. Uh, it was, uh, and you would have thought that we something. It was something very serious. Meanwhile, we had a, a, a cop was shot yesterday uh, and died. And you know, uh, if if the media spent as much time uh, concerned about something like that, uh, which does you know touch on politics very much, I think that uh, they would have a lot more credibility with people. I did want to. I re referenced it earlier, but I wanted to play this uh, sound from the White House briefing and Josh Ernest today. The fact that. Mrs. Trump received such warm applause and such a strong review of her speech uh, based on a reflection of the same kinds of values that were included in Mrs. Obama's speech. I think that's an indication that the country is, uh, has got a lot of common ground, uh, even in spite of the political divisions that are on display at the convention. Charles, that's essentially what Dr. Ben Carson told me the other day on the convention floor. That was a beautifully spun answer, by the White House. <laughs> Makes them look really good and shiny when 
there's a lot of not good appearances going on here. Look, I think execution is slightly over the top. But I would point out that yesterday, during the speech of Christie, a crowd of several thousand people here, we were here, began shouting about uh, Hillary Clinton, lock her up. Now, I can understand you want to rally the base, but if you're trying to appeal to the 17 remaining Americans who are undecided, that's not the way you want to go. If you're going to unite the party and unite the country, which is what people are looking for, that is not a good way to present the But, party. Charles, let me say, in Philadelphia, don't you expect there's going to be a whole slew of speakers who go directly after Donald Trump and every aspect of Donald Trump? Of course they will, but I don't know that I've ever seen a crowd of this size calling for the other side's presidential candidate to be jailed. Now, I will agree that some of that chanting was sort of uh, good-natured, over-the-top stuff that was done sort of half-heartedly, but there was some malice in that, and I think that's one thing with the execution thing, and there are a lot of that, and we saw it in a lot of the Trump rallies, it's something the Trump campaign has to work on to try to diminish or to tamp but down rather than is, to, I understood. to incite it, because it just looks bad for them. Is their challenge to rally and unify the base, or is it to reach out to those independents? Is it to rally the Hillary for prison sign in the front yard people? Or is it to rally the independents who are going to swing in some swing state? I think the job is a little bit of both. I think we're going to see Mike Pence try to do some of that tonight. I think they need to reach out to people who are not traditional Republicans, but he also needs to fire up the Republican base and people who have questions or concerns about Donald Trump as the commander-in-chief.